Okay, the title of this video is Greenhouse Effect Invalidated. Well, let's just uh, clarify that a little bit. What I'm saying is that I'm putting forward a hypothesis that the 33 degrees greenhouse effect warming claimed for the greenhouse gases in the troposphere is invalidated, to be more exact. Now, what leads me to this conclusion? Well, insulation from the sun and autocompression are what warm the earth and give the earth's lower atmosphere, that is in the lower troposphere where we live, that's what's important to us, give us the temperature. In a previous video, I outlined this uh, formula here, which is a der derived from the ideal gas law. And what I'll do in this video is expand on that a little bit and just rearrange the formula a little. The, uh, the black body law gives the Earth a temperature of about 255 Kelvin. And, but the actual average measured temperature of the Earth is 288 Kelvin. So there's 33 degrees centigrade or Kelvin, if you like, warmer there. Where did that, uh, where did that 33 Kelvin come from? Schmidt et al. say it comes from the greenhouse effect of water vapor CO2 and the other greenhouse gases. I think the ideal gas law here shows that it actually comes from auto compression, adiabatic auto compression. What is it? Well, this is what it is here. What happens is when a gas is compressed, it does negative work, compressed by gravity. Its temperature rises because some of its potential energy is converted into enthalpy through this formula, so increasing pressure and so kinetic energy. So in other words, when you descend through an atmosphere that is over 10 kPa in pressure, you get warming. That's it. Now we know that atmospheres over 10 kPa have a temperature gradient. We know this from Robinson Catling, their paper in 2014. If you're interested, you should look at that paper. It shows that any planetary body, it doesn't have to be a planet, as you see Titans there, uh, as soon as the atmospheric pressure reaches 10 kPa, or 0.1 bar if you like, this level here, on Earth it's a tropo tropopause, then you start to get a pressure-induced gradient. That's what we've got here for all the planets. Uranus, Neptune, Titan, Saturn, Jupiter, Earth and Venus. Mercury and Mars are not on here because their atmospheric surface pressure is too low. Well, probably a good place to start is have a quick gander at my previous video, calculating planetary surface temperatures made easy. I'll go into it in a little more detail there. Okay, fasten your seatbelt, put your thinking cap on, here we go. Venus, Earth and Titan. How could you imagine three more different planets planetary atmospheres than these three. Yet using the following equation, calculating their near surface average atmospheric temperature is easy. Remember the gas law, ideal gas law, the derivation here, converting it to temperature, rearranging the formula, throwing out volume. The average surface, near surface atmospheric temperature equals the average near surface atmospheric pressure in kPa times the average near surface atmospheric mean molecular weight divided by R, which is a gas constant, so it's 8.314, times rho, the average near surface atmospheric density in kilograms per cubic meter. What could be simpler? So to get the near surface average temperature of these, of these three planets, or any other planet with a, with a planetary atmosphere of over 10 kPa in pressure, all you need is three gas parameters. There we go. The average near surface atmospheric pressure, kPa. The average near surface atmospheric density in kilograms per cubic meter. And the average near surface atmospheric mean molecular weight. That's it. That's all you need. Bung them in there. Bingo. Here's Venus. The three properties come from Zazova, 2007. You can find them in other papers as well. Surface pressure, 92 bar, or 9,200 kPa if you like. Surface density, 65 kilograms per cubic meter. 
mean molecular weight 43.45 uh, fo remember 44 is co2 venusian atmosphere is 96.5 percent co2 and about three percent nitrogen and, and bits and bobs of other stuff bung them in here there you go 739.7 kelvin okay is that correct so let's say 740 here's venus wiki let's see where are we where's temperature we're predicting 740 or 739.7 they say 737 so we're two kelvin out that's not bad is it pretty bloody good okay let's go on earth these three parameters from wiki three gas parameters surface pressure 101.3 kpa density 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter mean molecular weight 28.97 remember these are global averages near surface averages this is what we're working out the near surface average temperature whack them in 288.3 kelvin okay let's check it wiki effective temperature of earth Where is it? There it is. The average temperature of the Earth is 288 Kelvin. That's not bad, is it? It's pretty well spot on. Okay, let's keep going while we're hot. Properties of Titan. Biggest moon of the planet, Saturn. The only moon with a thick atmosphere. Thicker than Earth's atmosphere. Data from, gas data from these jokers here. Can't pronounce them. Surface pressure, 146.7 kPa. Surface density, 5.25 kilograms per cubic meter. Now look at the high pressure. Remember, Titan's a small body. You know, somewhere between the Earth and Moon, about the size of Mercury. How did it get such a high pressure? Well, it's cold. It's cold. Surface density, same thing. You get, you get a high density when it's cold, when there's little insulation. So insulation affects pressure and density doesn't affect mean, mean molecular weight though directly. The mean moles 28, pretty well all nitrogen atmosphere on Titan. A little bit of CO2 thrown in. Here we go, whack them in, 94 Kelvin. Let's see what we got. Where's Titan? Here it is. Wiki Titan. What's the temperature? 94, remember we worked out, 93.7. That's not bloody bad, is it? Okay, keep going while we're hot. South Pole. Middle of Antarctica. Boy, oh boy. Data from these guys here. Ice Cube, Wiser, Edu, Wisconsin, Madison University. South Pole, Environment, Climate. You can get them anyway. Surface pressure. Average, remember. 68.13 kPa. Average surface density, 1.06 kilogram per cubic meter mean molecular weight 28.97 same everywhere on earth bang them in here bingo 224 kelvin which is in english minus 49 centigrade okay we'll look at the south pole neutrino observatory ice cube university of wisconsin madison remember we've got minus 49 centigrade for the average temperature at the south pole where are we can we see it? What's this? Average annual temperature, minus 49.5. That's not bad, is it? You can't say that's a bad one. Well, let's recheck it. Check another site. South Pole to AQ Environment Climate. How's about this? What's that? The average annual temperature at the South Pole is minus 49.3. Not bad, eh? Okay, let's keep going. What does all this mean? Is the ideal gas law is correct or the 33 centigrade greenhouse gas, greenhouse gas effect is correct? Both cannot be correct. If the ideal gas law is correct, well, my money's on it. Then, and remember, I won a fortune on Trump when he won, so I'm pretty good when I put money on, I, I get the right answer. It means that convection and adiabatic order compression determines surface atmospheric temperatures on the planetary bodies over 10 kPa. 
only dominate in the part of atmospheres less than 10 kPa. So on Earth, that's over the above the tropopause. Means that near surface atmospheric temperatures are not determined by a significant greenhouse effect either here on Earth or elsewhere. Venus, that's what I'm talking about. Venus, where's the greenhouse effect? Given all this, the climate sensitivity to CO2 must be extremely low, much too low to be measurable. I assume it's less than 0 0.02 degrees centigrade. Because under the ideal gas law, CO2 is no different to any other gas. You can put a bit, a bit of extra nitrogen, a bit of extra oxygen or whatever. doesn't make any difference. Planetary temperatures are mainly determined by two things. Solar insulation and adiabatic autocompression. Period. References. Don't forget the references.